Hey yo party peeps, Diablo 4 is officially out and we have got a bunch of great tips and end game insights that are gonna be coming your way soon. But while those are getting assembled, I thought it would be a fun idea to explore some of the more obscure aspects of the new Diablo 4 release and see how many of these unusual insights might have flown under your radar. You already know the deal, I will give you the information and value as quick as I can. You subscribe as soon as you hear a tip or insight you did not already know. And with the obligatory intro trash out of the way, Let's get into it. The first hidden gem most folks have likely missed starts right away before you even start throwing together that new class build. While there are a ton of cool options to make your character unique from class to class, did you know that there is a hairstyle for each class that you can only find for that specific class? While it doesn't impact gameplay in any way, it's definitely something that most people probably overlooked or didn't think to consider when loading in a new character. So make sure to check these options out when you're building something new. Once you have your character created, your first goal will be getting to Kiova Shad for all of the benefits that the first major town provides. But before you leave, don't overlook the opportunity to use the hello emote near the dog that's roaming around the city to give it a very good pet. As it happens, each major city and sanctuary has one of these dogs and you can pet all of them using this exact same method. I'm of the mind that you probably should get a benefit by doing this, but unfortunately it just makes you besties with a very good boy. Once you've given out your scritches and you are ready to head out into the world, I would strongly consider doing so with a friend. Or a stranger. Or an enemy, I guess. Not only do you receive a 5% XP boost when you are exploring alongside other players, this bonus is doubled to 10% if one of those players is also in your party. Combine this with the boost of 5% to your XP by consuming any elixir and you are immediately earning a 15% bonus on all XP the moment you finish the prologue. You can bump this up again with another 20% bonus on all monster kills by playing in world tier two, raising your overall XP gain to 35% with all of these bonuses active. Fortunately, you can activate these at any time by changing the difficulty at the World Tier statue in Kyovashad, crafting any potion at the many potion vendors throughout the world, or pairing up with a friend, unless you prefer taking the Tinder approach where you're just throwing out an invite to anyone who happens by. Honestly, I don't judge. Hello. Speaking of world tier, for those of you that gradually moved your way up the ladder in difficulty through Diablo, did you notice that the world tier statue changes its appearance with each difficulty tier? Starting as a basic stone statue on world tier one, the Inaria statue becomes surrounded by loot and trimmed in gold when you raise it to world tier two. Increase it to level three, however, and hellish ambiance emerges as spindly fingers and rotted guts now trim the perimeter of the statue. Gross. Aesthetics aside, now that you're out in the world and ready to explore, I'd recommend getting a horse as soon as you are able. While it's pretty common knowledge that traveling by horse is much faster than on foot, you'll also find that the aggro range of enemies while you're on horseback is drastically reduced and the delay before enemies aggro is notably increased. Outside of these additional conveniences, you might not have known that you can also control the speed that your horse travels by how far in front of your horse your mouse is. Move it far away to move your horse fast, keep it close in front of your horse to move it slow, and and park it in the middle distance to give your horse a little skip in its step. Whether it is on horseback or on foot, I would also highly advise hitting any legion events that might come up as long as you feel you are adequately leveled. These events offer a ton of loot when compared to the time and difficulty of a lot of Diablo's world events, and it is a great way to farm powerful loot if you luck out in joining a good group. While most of you probably know that, I can say for sure it seems a lot of you are missing the additional XP boost you receive from standing near the campfires that are always available for these events. All you have to do is stoke the fire, stand near it, and you can get a stack of up to 15 that provides you a beneficial XP boost right before you take on waves and waves of power leveling fodder. After the event is done and you are sorting through your spoils, make sure to turn on the advanced compare features if you haven't already. Not only can you see what you're giving up and gaining by switching items out, but you can also see how good the rolls on a given item are by displaying their potential range. Sure, a big bump in item power might feel better than what you're currently using, but finding out those numbers are actually the basement on what an item could have rolled offers some perspective in terms of what you might want to re-roll, what you should upgrade, or whether or not that fresh new item is even likely to hold up through your next few levels. Once you've sorted through the duds and narrowed down your options to the true cream of the crop, you may find that your best items don't perfectly gel with your playstyle anymore. If you're going to do a respect to try and make better use of the tools in front of you, make sure to use the keyword search in your abilities tab to ensure you're syncing your skills with the item benefits accordingly. In addition to sorting your optimized items alongside 
alongside their various benefits, you can also isolate the nodes that are getting a bump from your equipment by adding the from equipment tag as well. Make sure to check this out often as it gives you a better taste of different play styles if you are able to check out the most powerful levels for these abilities right away. If you end up changing out old items during your restructuring but don't want to lose any of the gems that you have socketed, don't run to the jeweler to take them out before breaking it down. Anything with gems socketed into it automatically returns to you when it gets broken down. This is true at the blacksmith and legendary items when you remove aspects from them at the occultist. So save the gold of removal and just trash anything you're no longer using for whatever benefit it can provide you. You'll still end up with your gems back at the end of the process. And the last fun and interesting tip I'm sure many of you have overlooked, the emote wheel. Sure, you probably know that it exists and that you can use it to say things in the world. But did you know you can use it to quickly exit out of a dungeon after it's been completed? How about using them to activate special shrines throughout the world that provide you different benefits based on using the correct emote? Even if you knew about both of these uses, did you know you can have consumables equipped on the wheel to quickly pop potions like incense or use your PvP activation scrolls as well? Well, if you did, good job poking around. I guess. But for the rest of you, make sure you have a series of potions ready for big dungeons so you always have the right damage boost ready, or make sure you have an edge in PvP by keeping a quick escape or sneaky finish always available. And with that, those are the 10 tips, insights, and hidden functionalities many of you probably missed in Diablo 4. We are currently already hard at work on a pair of tips videos that should cover everything from early to end game, and with the same love and care that many of you have come to know from the channel. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything, and until I see you next time. Party on.